Hi. Hi. Are you sure you can prepare for product based companies through this course? Yes, sitting at home. No way. Yes way. Don't delay. Enroll now. Geeks learning together. Yes. Hey. Uh what do you mean by a self-paced course? Well, the course material is available in the form of video lectures and there are multiple practice problems that come along as well. So, you can access all of it anywhere, anytime and they are available to you for lifetime. No way. Oh, yes way. Don't delay and enroll now. Geeks learning together. Hello guys and welcome back to this amazing channel. This is Abhinav and today we are back with our next problem of the day. First of all, please let me know if I'm clearly audible and visible to you all so that we can start today's class. The problem today is the smallest positive missing number. Uh, the problem is uh, if we will solve it, there are different ways to solve that problem. There are easy ways also, brute force ways also. But uh, in this particular video, we will discuss about we will discuss all the ways, but we will implement the most efficient way for solving this particular problem. So thanks this is for confirming that I'm clearly visible to you. And uh, thanks and hello Nakit, how are you? So let's start with this class, guys. Let me share the screen. Okay. So a smallest positive missing number. The number says that you are given an array of n integers, including zero. And there like can be uh, negative numbers also you can see, okay? What you have to do is, the task is to find the smallest positive number that is missing in the array, okay? So let's say the array is like this. Let's say array is 0, minus 10, 1, 3, minus 20. So if you will see, which is the smallest negative uh, positive number which is not present? So which, the, which is the first positive number? 1. So 1 is present. Which is the second positive number? 2. 2 is not present. So 2 is the answer. Let's say we are talking about this particular array. So in this particular array, you will see 1 is also present, 2 is also present, 3 is also present, 4 is not present. And that is the answer. So is the problem clear to you all? What the problem is saying? Please tell me. So guys, the very brute force approach to solve this problem is that simply we can store them in a map and we can simply have an array from 1 to n and we can check key which number is not present. That's a very basic way to solve this particular problem. A very basic way. Okay. There will not be any problem if you will use that particular way. But that will take a time complexity of order of n and a space complexity of order of, one, order of n. But what we will target, we will target a time complexity of order of n and a constant space constant. Uh, complexity. That is what our target is. So let's see how we will solve. First of all, please let me know if the problem is clear. Clear? Okay. Now see what we will do. Guys. So let's say we have our uh, problem like this. We have a uh, 2, let's say. Then we have uh, minus 1. Then we have 3. Then we have 1. Then we have 0. Then we have uh, 5. Okay. And let's say then we have minus 7. This is the error that we have. Let's see how we can solve uh, this particular array. So guys, if you will see every element, which is in the range from one to n. So first thing is that we have to target elements from range one to n only, because we have to target, we have to focus on positive numbers, which are from range, you can see, a smallest positive number, which are from range zero, okay. So we have to focus on a number, which are in this particular range. Okay, right, obviously. So the, the, the answer should be always be less than n. It cannot be greater than n. Okay. So first of all, numbers should be in range. Means the numbers should be positive. That is the first thing. And it should not be present. 
so how we will track that a particular number is not present so what we will do guys that for each and every number we will place it at its specific position what do i mean like when i'm saying it's a specific position what does it mean so let's say this is the thing so if we will assume that number 1 basically number 1 belongs to index number 0 number 2 belongs to index 1 number 3 belongs to index 2 uh, basically a number which is i belongs to index i minus 1 if we will focus on this thing means 1 should be at index number 1 2 should be at index number 2 3 at index number 3 4 at index number 3 uh, at index number 2 4 at index number 3 5 at index number 4 and so on in this way we can simply check that if there is any index which does not contain its corresponding number that means that number is missing okay so maybe it's quite confusing now let me let me make it more clear so what we will do guys see what we will do so what we will do basically first discuss what we will do so what we have to do is but let's say we have a number x let's say we have a number x we want to place that number at index x minus So let's say if we have a number five, we have to place it at fourth index. That is what we will do. Is this clear? Is this thing clear or not? Is it clear? Is it clear? Is it clear? And that we have to do for every positive number. for every positive number yeah they have not mentioned this say that the numbers are from one uh, are from one to they are not mentioned i know even they are, there are negative numbers also you can see the numbers are negative and zero also but one thing that we know is that the answer will always be between 1 to n plus 1 you know why the answer will always be between this number because let's say even if the array is like 1 2 3 4 5 5 then also the answer will be 6 in any of the cases if any number between this is missing that will be the answer so answer will never be greater than n plus 1 so max answer can be n plus 1 and i will tell you the case so this is the case when let's say an, an array is a size is 5 and elements are 1 2 3 4 5 5 in that case answer is 6 means n plus 1 that is the only counter case and in all the other cases the answer will be between 1 to n you can check this thing the answer will always be between 1 to n and we are searching for answer i'm not saying that elements are from 1 to n but the answer will always be between that thing got it see what we will do guys what we will do we will take a loop 0 to n minus 1 and for every number which is greater than 0 equal to 1 and which is Less than equal to n. What we'll do? So where that number should be? So let's say there's a number a r of i. So a number a r of i should be present at index a r of i minus one. A r of i. So we will swap that number with that particular index. Okay, we'll swap that number. The number. At its index, index कौनसी a r r of i minus one. See what I am doing. What is this? See what I, I have written here. So let's say two is the number. So two should be present at index number one. Two should be present at index number one, na? Two should be present at index number one. So what I will do? I will swap it with the number at index number one. Currently, the number at index number one is different. What it is? It is minus one. So what I will do, I will swap it, so it become like this. Now I will move forward. Next is, so this is done. Okay. Next is two. So two should be at minus one. It is already at minus one. Okay. Let's move forward. Now it's three. Now it's three. Now, okay. Uh, there is a point. Actually, I have solved this problem already. Uh, with this same method, you can see. So actually, they go. Here, we have done same thing. But there is a point that we have to discuss. Okay, uh, there, this is a point that we can discuss. But okay, that is not required, I guess. If they are equal, then also it will be fine. 
yeah okay i don't think it is will be very much required fine theek hai so dekho ab not three is there so three should be present at which index three should be present at index number 2 present index number 2 and it is present in index number 2 you can see it should be present in index number 2 and it is present at index number 2 so again there is no problem again there is no problem okay great okay next comes one so one should be present at index number 0 one should be present at index number 0 so what i will do we will make this at index number 0 now it's zero we will not now five should be present at index number 4 so we'll make it at that particular place now you can see guys this is our final error this is our final error okay now we will start from index number 0 and we will check which number is missing so index number 0 has number 1 it's fine 1 has number 2 it's fine 2 has number 3 it's fine so means basically every index like so let's say there is a number a or of i present it should be equal to i plus 1 means index plus 1 So three is two plus one. Two is one plus one. One is zero plus one. You can see this is not correct. That means that means that answer is four. This particular index plus one. Okay. This is what we will do. Okay. This is what we will do. So you can see I have it's a like very, very basic uh, code that uh, is written here. I have also written. Okay. So if you guys want, I can uh, write it again for you. You have to simply take a loop for and i is equal to 0 i is less than i plus plus so if arr of i is greater than equal to 1 and less than equal to n we'll simply swap it with arr of i comma arr of arr of i minus means it's it's index okay now what we'll do once this all is done now we'll check which number is not at its position so again we'll have a loop again we'll have a loop A number is not at its position means i plus one. So if a number is three, it should be at position two. So if it is not at that position, that means that number is not present and will return that particular i plus one. And let's say guys, if all the numbers are present, let's say the array is like one, two, three, four, five, as I told you. So this particular case, it will not return anything. So in this particular case, your answer will be. Six means n plus one. Okay, all the numbers from one to n are present. The least smallest number which is not present is n plus one. So we will return. N plus one. This is what we do. Okay. Okay, it should be not equal to. It should be not equal. To. Like if it is missing, na. If it is equal, then it's fine. It should be not equal to. Guys, is it, is it clear, guys? Everyone, please let me know. So this is how we are solving this particular problem. Okay, wait. Uh, Okay, there is one more thing we have to check is that if we are swapping, we have to check if the number is already not equal. So see, uh, you can see here I have checked one more case. One more case was so yeah. 
I just just add this thing. One more case was this that we are swapping, but that if that both are already equal, then there is no mean. So this should be not equal. I guess that is the problem we are having here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess that's the point. Na? I guess that's the point. Yeah. Exactly. It should be a while loop. So sorry, guys. So, so sorry. It should be a while. Like it should, it should have to check again. That was the problem we are, we are facing. So I, I, I just missed that point that it is if. Okay. 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 So it, it went. Okay. So yeah, guys, this is also, I just missed it that it should be. By the way, this is not a required condition. That is why I have removed it. It is not required. So even like if it, even they are equal, you are swapping that will not make any change now. That is not required. It's still, uh, I think so. Okay, okay, but it should be while. It should that that's a per, perfect thing. It should be while. Okay, but because it's a while loop, I was taking a if condition. Okay, so that was a silly mistake that there should be a if. So when we are having if, then there was no means of this using this particular condition. But because we are using a while. Then there is a meaning of using this condition because otherwise it will it will be like an infinite loop. Okay, it will be an infinite loop. So I was just confused to uh, use here if instead of while. Okay, uh, exactly. The, uh, then we will stuck in an infinite infinite loop. Exactly, Nikhil. If it is a if, then we can use. Uh, hi, Joel. Uh, yeah, sure. We can we can have a dry run. So. Was asking, uh, let's save a uh, two, three, one, and let's have a dry run. So, see, uh, let's first have a uh, different example. Let's say the example is two, one, minus seven, four. See, guys, what do we do? First, we are at two, so two should be present at index number one. So, we'll swap it. Now, it's one, so one should be present at one. A zero, it's fine. Okay, let's move forward. Next is two. Two should be present in the next number one. It's fine. Move forward. It's negative. Don't take it. Four should be present at three. It's there. Move forward. Otherwise, you can see two is the index which does not have its corresponding number. So answer is three. Let's take that case two, three, one. So here, what will happen is so first two is there. So two will check for its corresponding index, which is one. So it will it will swap it. Now three is there. Three will check for its corresponding index, which is one. So it will which is two. It will swap it. Now you can see one is at its specific position. Okay, one is at its position. Move forward. Two is also at its position. Move forward. Three is also at its position. Move forward. Finally, all the positions are there. Means at the last, it will return n plus one, which is Three plus one. That is the output. Yeah, you can, you can, exactly. Great, Joel. You can participate in Geekway Olympics. Yeah, guys, it is similar to cyclic sort. You can refer that particular problem. Okay. There are multiple other ways also, but this is the best way. Okay, okay guys, thank you for this today's class. Let's meet again next weekend. Till then, thank you. Happy coding. Take care. Bye bye. GFG Gadlo. Hoja.